also, if you're a pastor, you're a preacher, you're a minister, evangelist, and you would like to be filmed or be placed on our broadcast as well as on our on the TV station that we're with, well, then you need to give me a call. And also, if you would like to be placed on our website, doing your sermon, doing your church services, doing your talk show, or whatever kind of program that you desire. If you would like to be a part of our ministry, and if you would like for us to push you out there and put you out there in that manner, you need to give us a call. We can have it produced for you. We can have you filmed. We can make that connection for you. Or either you can produce your own video and present your video to us. So let us know. We are here to serve you. Okay. Well, on that note, on that note, well, you know, you know, you know that we are doing the Sunday School lesson this week because we do not have a speaker this week. So, therefore, we are doing the Sunday School lesson for you. And we did it on last week, and we got kind of long-winded. We kind of, like, had to cut it off or chop it up uh, on the broadcast, but we did play it full on the website. So... If you have an opportunity before Thursday or Friday, we may still have it up on the website. So you might want to go to the website and hear the Sunday School lesson in its entirety. But guess what? We're going to go to a commercial break, and then we're going to come back with that Sunday School lesson. Listen up and be blessed. Hi, I'm Evangelist Zinnery in Washington, the host of one of the Truth and Gospel videos, which airs weekly here on Channel 22. Men and Hearts Ministries invites you to Mom and Pop Williams Down Home Gospel Jamboree, celebrating the William Brothers 50 year in gospel music, featuring the number one quartet and 10 times solo award winner, Lee Williams and the Spiritual QCs, the William Brothers, Darrell McFadden and the Disciples, the legendary Spencer Taylor and the Highway QCs, Bob Holloway and the Southern Sons, special guests. MC and comedian D.L. Henry. It will take place at Angro Wellness Center, 3160 Highway 98 West, Summit, Mississippi, Saturday, November 27 at 5.30 p.m. For more information and tickets, please call host Pastor Oliver and Lady Belva Smith, 601-810-2684, 601-810-2684. Again, we want to see you there. I've taken my love. Well, welcome back. Welcome back. Well, I hope you pay attention to those commercials. Well, we're back with that Sunday School lesson. And for those of you who do attend Sunday School regularly, and those of you who have been following us on the Sunday School lessons weekly, well, this is the book that we come from. If you would like to get that book and you're going to be following us each and every week, well, then, this is a book that you do want to have in your library. And it is The Adult Christian Life. The Adult Christian Life. And it is the fourth quarter, October, November, and December. And I tell you, we had some awesome lessons in October. But now we're getting ready to go to Unit 2. Unit 2. Now, Unit 1 was God Sustains. And we're just going to give you a preview of what Unit 2 is going to consist of. For your studying, you can get the studying and start reading daily. This is the fourth quarter again, and this is the weekly Sunday school lesson. We're in Unit 2, and the title of Unit 2 is God Protects. For November the 7th, which is the lesson we're going to talk about on this week, it says, Holy Dependable. Holy Dependable. It comes from Psalm 66, 1 through 12. For the next week, November the 14th, Life is Short. That's an interesting title. Psalms 90, 1 through 12. For the third week, for this unit 2, God Protects. For no Sunday, November the 21st, 
Where is my security blanket? Interesting title. It comes from Psalms 9, 1 through 6, and then they skip through 9 through 16. Okay, November the 28th, Comforting Awareness. Psalms 139, 1 through 6, 13 through 16, and 23 through 24 is the scriptures that they use. And as I went over this lesson today, unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend the daily bread for an unfortunate reason. But, so I wasn't able to get any feedback from uh, the ones that are in the class that we study together. So I had to talk to Jesus and ask him to show me what he wanted me to say and what he wanted me to get out of this lesson. Again, that subject is holy, dependable. And we also get the fact that that also means totally dependable. I was conversing with a friend, and as we were talking about the word holy dependable, I did talk to someone, and they said, been totally dependable. The unified topic, God is awesome. The background scripture is that Psalm 66, 1 through 12. The main thought for this week lesson comes from that verse 5 in chapter 6, well, in Psalm 66. And it says, come and see the works of God. He is terrible in his doing toward the Christian, the children of men. And as I thought about that and as I read that, what came to mind was in our previous lesson in Unit 1. In Unit 1, it talked about, when we talked about Good leaders, good leaders, which was the lesson before last week's lesson. It talked about good leaders, and it had the word up in one of the scriptures in verse uh, Psalms 47 and uh, verse 2, I believe. 47 and one of the verses, it said something about the terribleness. It brought out that in that lesson. And so then it comes again in this psalm reminding us, come and see the works of God. He is terror in his doing toward the children of men. And as I thought about when he said the children of men, what came to mind when we talked about it up in the other uh, scripture and in the other lesson, it was saying like the things that happen that are not good or the things that come on us from sin, from our sin, sinful action, from our disobedience. I come to the conclusion that when they talked about the children of men here, it was referring to the children of disobedience, the children that follow after the flesh. And that even includes us as Christians when we're not doing things the way God has told us to do it. And we want to do wrong and not do right when we know to do right instead of doing what God has commanded us to do. We are considered the children of men. And then also we know that these scriptures are also talking about something that was going on at that time, some kind of way that God was dealing with the enemy. And so our first outline says, dependable because of his name. We realize God is dependable because of his name. As you read the scriptures one through four, that's where they get that title from. Dependable because of his name. And the scripture reads as follows. It says, make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. Sing forth the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Though the goodness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. You see that word terrible again. He said, say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. I mean, God's enemies have to submit themselves to thee. Not really willingly because they want to submit themselves, but because God, I mean, when God get through working on the enemy, especially on our behalf when the enemies come up against us, even our selfless flesh, which is an enemy. And we have to learn how they always say in their bread, the young gentleman that, has such much, such wisdom that studies with us. I always talk about how 
We got to treat our flesh, our own selfish ways, our own selfish desires as an enemy. I mean, yeah, there's no good thing in the flesh. The Bible tells us there's no good thing in the flesh. I'm not going to sit around and think good things all the time when, I, when I'm allowing my flesh to manifest and when I'm not studying God's word or when I'm not reminding myself what God's word said. Because sometimes, you know, we may be talking to our peers or our friends or our associates and if they're not ready to surrender totally to God, well, then sometimes when we remind them that we don't do certain things, as Pastor said on the other Sunday, because who we belong to and we're not our own and because God is our Father, well, then sometimes when we talk to our friends and our peers, and I say that they're not saved, but saying that they are saved like we are sometimes, but we still want to hold on to certain things that we like in the flesh, some of those things that are not good. Now, it might be good to you, I hear people say but not good for us, okay? So, okay, that's real. That's real. Some things are good to us, but it don't mean it's good for us. So when we want to hang on to those things and we want to continue to do those things or continue to um, enjoy the works of the flesh, then we, 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 we'll, go, uh, we'll go talk about, well, that was Bible time. Uh, we ain't at church now or we ain't in the Bible now. Uh, we all, and sometimes people want to call you holier than thou, but it's not that you're being holier than thou, and it's not that you're not human, but it's because you say you have surrendered to God, and you say that you want to be a child of the king, and you say you love God, and he is your father, he is your God, he is your leader. Well, so far, so, so when you say that, that means you're supposed to be led by his spirit. You're supposed to walk in his spirit. And so when you're telling your friends or your associates these things, you are just trying and striving for that perfection that God wants us to have. You are, you are striving for that upright walk that he requires you to have. Uh, I heard um, Brother Salmon, the young gen the gentleman, the older gentleman that has all the wisdom, as he said, like some of our lessons said previous, previously in other quarters, that we got to remember who we are all the time. Whether God is there, because God is everywhere, or whether somebody is looking and they can see what we're doing and where we're going, we supposed to be able to remember that we are Christians when ain't nobody looking but God and ourselves. And maybe if we're involved with other people, those individuals or individual people. We got to remember that God is still there. And not so much just not just so because God is looking at you. God shouldn't have to put a hammer over our head and say, I'm gonna kill you if you do this. Or uh, he shouldn't have to lead us. We want him to lead us into doing what we're supposed to do. But God shouldn't have to do that. We should automatically know who we are in him. And as we study his word and as that Holy Spirit tell us what's wrong and the Holy Spirit tell us that we're not supposed to do this. And you hear I said us. I'm not exempting myself. No, Lord, I'm not. But when the Holy Spirit deals with us about our wrong thinking, our wrong motives, our wrong actions, our wrong dealings, or our wrong attempts, okay? And so, and I'm telling you, we need to send that back to the pits of hell about if you thought it, you might as well have said it. If you thought it, you might as well have done it. And I've been telling people for a long time, and my pastor hit it on the head uh, a couple Sundays ago. You can't get AIDS just by thinking about having uh, sexual intercourse with someone. No, you can't just get AIDS by thinking about it. You can't get AIDS by just lusting about it. You can only get the A's when you actually commit, when you actually get involved and you actually do it. That's when you can get the A's. So, and then all that cursing people out, uh, you thought it, you might as well have said it. I don't know you wanted to curse me. Now, I might know about your expression, but long as you don't do it, I can't hold that over your head. But when you actually speak it to me and you bring it into existence, that's when it has an effect on me.